when I get down to it. Uh, we're going to be, uh, I was fortunate to finally, I looked for two years for this thing, um, but one of uh, Macintosh's integrated, so I was finally able to get a hold of, look for two years for this thing. And again, I'm in the Midwest, I don't have access to a lot of these hi-fi shops, and um, a, a dealer was gracious, gracious enough to, to order me one in locally so I can try it. Um, so we'll see how it compares, you know, if I can hear any difference. Um, it's probably twice the, 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 the price range of what this Yamaha is. So, you know, let's take a quick listen. Let's take a quick compare. I'll give you my thoughts. Um, but anyway, we're going to switch out the Yamaha AS2200 to the new Macintosh integrated, the 8950. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And then I'll have some, a few days of listening and then I'll share my experience with you. Uh, what am I hearing that's different? and is it worth the price tag? Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, we're back. I've had an opportunity to spend a few hours um, with the Macintosh 8950 and just wanted to provide a few thoughts and mostly in comparison to uh, the Yamaha AS2200. I know they're in different price categories, but kind of just wanted to, to share my thoughts. Again, some of this is revolving around, um, you know, budget-friendly hi-fi and and so I'll kind of relate back to, to that topic here um, as we're going through this conversation. But my initial thoughts, I've got a chance to spend about, um, you know, five hours, six hours listening to the Mac 8950. It is an integrated amplifier. Um, and uh, I, I like it. I do. I, I really like it. I was hoping to like it more. Like I really wanted to... to um, um, you know, see a, or hear a big difference, especially for the price range. I mean, this is about t twice that of the of the Yamaha, and there are some definite differences with this. Um, first off, uh, one of the things that that I noticed sound wise from from the Yamaha is that um, I do feel like this has a greater control over the speaker. So um, I think a, a lot of that relates to there's more or better power um, and control of, of the, the whole system using the, the Mac gear than there is with the Yamaha. The Yamaha might be a little underpowered um, for the Wilson Sabrinas, again, especially since they dip down to that 2.5, 2.6 ohm range in certain frequencies. So some of that might be um, from more power that the, that the Mac puts out, maybe it's better power. Um, I mean, who knows, right? Um, there's so many uh, <clears throat> engineering statistics and engineering uh, data that goes along with this that a lot of us don't understand. But um, <clears throat> so I think there's 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 definitely greater control of it. Um, the, the, and, and with that, you know, back to that power conversation, I, I think that there's um, that there's uh, a, a little bit bigger sound stage that's coming um, from the, the speaker using the Mac, a little bit. So um, not a massive difference. I guess I was, again, hoping that there'd be a, a, a huge dramatic, um, wow, this is an amazing experience. And I guess I was slightly um, underwhelmed between the differences of, of the two. Um, there, the, the sound with that bigger sound stage, I think it's more um, enveloping. So um, when I say a bigger sound stage, um, you know, it's kind of an audiophile term that people use, but it, it feels like, you know, the sound's coming out from the speakers a little bit more out and up. And so the, you know, the, the term wider sound stage, it kind of envelops you a little bit more. Uh, and again, I think that probably relates back to the power of, of the Mac. Um, <clears throat> some of the other notes that I've made on it here really quick, not to bore you, um, but moving along. Um, one of the things that people say about Macintosh and whether this is a positive or, or a negative, I don't know. I mean, a lot of this is personal preference, right? And so there's definitely a lot of um, subjective thoughts with all of this audio gear. And so again, the recommendation is go out and listen to it. Try and get into your home if you can. Again, this dealer's been gracious enough for, for me to, to let me um, borrow and, and demo this in my home, you know, because that makes a big difference. It, uh, it's different than listening to it in, in a store um, with a different, totally different sound uh, environment with totally different speakers. So I was able to actually compare A and B, you know, that Yamaha to this in, in my own home. So if you can do that, definitely try it, especially if you're gonna plunk down a decent amount of change on some of these things. 
but anyway, um, <clears throat> people say Mac, Macintosh say sound is warm, but like, what does that mean? Like to me, warm is a temperature, right? Like it's not a sound. Sound sounds are waves, and you know, there's high frequencies, and there's mid frequencies, and there's low frequencies, um, depending on the on the sound wave, on how it goes, if it's short or if it's you know longer. Um, sound like so so warm. Like what does what does that mean? Like, <clears throat> is there a blanket over it? Um, is it is it um, is it is there more bass to it? I mean, I mean, what does that mean? And I think you know, after listening to this, compared to to the Yamaha, to me, what that what it seems like, this is definitely uh, a more natural, uh, realistic presentation of the sound. So voices. Um, uh, voices are are more natural. They're 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 played off more in that in that mid level uh, frequency range <clears throat> to be more of a realistic to me more of what that impression would be. Um, the 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 other thing that with with the warm um, just reading some of the notes that I made made here the the mids are uh, the mid frequencies are a little bit richer, and so the differences between this and um, you know what what is that richer that's not really a sound signature either to me it seems like the Yamaha even though it says natural sounding amplifier on it to me it seems like there's it's geared more to um, <clears throat> having more treble built into it so higher frequencies are uh, or frequency range you know they're played up a little bit into that higher frequency range right where uh, the Macintosh seems to be just presenting exactly what that what that sound is so um, it's neither is bad nor good, right? So some people might like those higher um, frequencies to come through, um, and so the Yamaha might actually be a better um, or something similar that that has those higher frequencies, or you know the the treble played into the sound signature. They might like that better. Uh, the other thing that plays into that too is that as we age, our hearing gets um, worse, uh, and that affects you know, of course, everybody's. Uh, subjectivity of these things too so um, you know if you're if, if you can't hear high noises uh, high pitches as well you might want an amplifier that plays into that treble zone a little bit better um, <clears throat> you know again it's it's neither as good nor bad um, it's just kind of what you prefer so um, I think that that's where that that Mac warm when they say warm um, I didn't like feel like there was a blanket like it, nothing no, none of the sound was covered up uh, in a in a in a in a warm way I guess right so um, I would just say that it's more of a, a natural less treble built into the sound of it so that's my take on it um, micro details some people say Max skips over the micro details I didn't necessarily feel like that was true um, you know that the Yamaha again with a more treble focus is slightly I'm, I'm, and I mean we're splitting hairs here um, with that more treble focus, you might hear slightly, like very slightly, more uh, variation or reflux in, in people's um, voices as they reverberate. Um, I would say like saxophones, trumpets, they're a little bit um, higher pitched uh, a little bit. It's like turning the treble up a little bit when a sax is playing or a trumpet is playing on the Yamaha, where again, the Mac is a little bit more um, smooth and natural and um, the, those instruments are played more in that mid frequency versus the high uh, frequency or balancing between the two. Um, again, on the, on the micro details, um, you, it might, the Yamaha might get into a little bit more of the micro details. So like it might be more pronounced, again in my room, the like the, the lip smacking sound, um, the reverberation of a guitar string, um, you know, when a person takes a breath in a song before they um, start singing the next next verse, that sound, um, you might get that a little bit more on, again, just a little bit more on the on the Yamaha than you than you do the the, the Macintosh. And again, I think it's playing into that more audible, um, differentiated treble zone because of that. It might be why it's bringing that out. Um, and then the, I guess the, the last difference that, that I could really say um, before we get to aesthetics is uh, a lot of people say, well, gosh, you know, everyone's reading these dampening, fa dampening factors, right? 
my amp's got 370, my amp's got 250 or 500 dampening factor. And, you know, a lot of that, after doing some reading on it, is, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a misleading statistic. And I know I'll get a lot of people um, probably disagree with me there, but it comes more down to more than the dampening factor of, of the amplifier. And basically it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a resistance load. It's a, uh, the amplifier has less of a resistance load to the feedback coming back when that speaker's coming backwards. So, um, you know, they're, they're saying that it controls and makes tighter bass, um, is, is what it boils down to. Um, Mac, you know, they say, I think it says greater than 40, um, <clears throat> or something like that. And that, the Yamaha has a 200 and it's close. You'll have to look at the st statistics on this, the stats, the details, but I think it's like 250 damping factor. So it's way higher than what Mac is, is, is saying here. But one, it comes down to more than just the amplifier. It comes down to speaker wire and the actual uh, resistance of the speakers. Um, you know, the, the, the ohm rating, um, the distance of the speaker wire, the type of speaker wire, the gauge. I mean, there, so there's a system damping factor and there's some math that's involved in there and figuring that out. And then there's also a lot of debate on, you know, what do you need? Is it above 10? Is it above 30? Is it above 50? Is it above 100? Um, you know, again, so it all, to me with this, uh, with this uh, hobby, it all comes down to, you can listen to a little of the reviews to like start pointing you in the right direction on which product that you want to choose, but you got to listen to it and you got to make those, make those assumptions and, and, you know, decide for yourself. Um, because it's hard because like, how do I know that again, it's not a marketing stat and somebody saying, yeah, my amp's better than the next guy's amp because it's got a higher dampening factor. It's like, well, I'm going to make my purchase off of that. Uh, that's hard to do. I did not notice um, with the, you know, again, going back to the dampening factor of, of the Mac being lower than the Yamaha, I didn't notice any um, difference in the um, amount or um, quickness of bass notes. So like those bass notes in, in strings, you know, there's a little bit of a bass um, frequency in a guitar pluck, for example. I mean, it was still very quick on this in and out, so you can hear those plucks. Um, you know, drum beats, you know, if someone's hitting the drum beat really quick um, on a song, I did not notice any difference in speed with this on, on the Sabrinas. Again, and they're a pretty quick speaker. Um, so I, I would say that that's equal between, between the two amplifiers. One thing that I did notice, however, is that uh, when I had the sub turned on on, on the Mac um, and plugged into the, to the, uh, to the outputs on the back of the Macintosh, it, it must have a higher output level because I had to turn my sub way down. Um, it had way too much bass, like it was sending a higher volume level of, or amount of frequency to the sub. So, um, you know, that's kind of an interesting um, feature because you can't adjust it, the amplifier set that way, uh, at least on, on these two that, that I'm aware of. I know on the Yamaha, I can't adjust it. Um, the, the, the other cool thing that I like about this Mac, however, is like when you're plugging in a sub, it goes into the output. You can't really see it on the video, um, but there's outputs one and two here. So I can actually, instead of turning the sub off on the switch on the back of it, because it's a powered sub, um, I can, um, that's what I would have to do on the Yamaha to be able to turn the sub off if I just wanted to listen to the speakers without any sub, which I do on occasion. You know, sometimes I like that bass, sometimes I just want it to sound more natural. Um, but on, anyway, on the Mac, there's outputs one and two. The sub, I believe, is I've got it plugged into two. I can just hit this output button, um, and it cuts out that output signal and shuts the, the sub down, and it goes into sleep mode. So that's kind of cool. Like, I don't have to reach around to the back of the sub and do it. I can just do it from the face. So I really like that. Um, I did play with the equalizer a little bit. So it's got a few more options. Uh, the Yamaha just has... Uh, bass, mid, and treble on it. This actually has it split up into frequency range, 30, 125, 500, uh, 2,000, and 10,000. Um, so 500, you know, mids, 2Ks, um, upper mids, treble, and 10K treble. I did mess around with that, and it didn't, it, it um, you, you can also turn that on and off, which is cool, just by hitting that equalizer button, so you can have, have it pass through exactly what that song is intended. But if you've got, you know, quirkiness in your room, or if you, uh, you know, all these recordings, that's the other thing with this hobby is like, 
it, it's awesome if you get a good recording, but there's a lot of bad recordings out there, it's, or, or not good recordings, I should say. And so you can mess around with the drum. I did like that, having more options there than um, just the, the, the three. Um, so that was kind of fun. And again, just e easily hitting that equalizer button and, and shutting it off and letting the music be what it is, if you may. Um, so I really enjoyed that about, obviously I love, well that's, that's getting into the, the, the aesthetic. So um, I guess on the sound quality as a, as a quick summary, um, more power, a little more bass. Um, a lot of that was coming from the greater output on the sub, if you have it turned on. Definitely um, a little more control uh, of the speaker. You, you can sense that it has more, more power behind it, like it's not running out of steam kind of a, a, a uh, a feeling, you know, and if you relate it to an engine, like hitting into that 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 RPM range, those, you know, the, the, the power output goes down, right? Like you can actually feel your car kind of slow down. So that's, that's kind of what I mean with that, like doing an analogy to an automotive industry. Um, I, I definitely felt that it had more power. Uh, again, a little bit greater sound space, probably because of that power. Um, you know, a little minor difference in micro details um, and definitely definitely more um, natural, uh, richer, warmer in that, in that uh, mid-range where vocals are playing at, you know, the, the, the start of trumpets and saxophones. Pianos, piano notes I did sound, notice sounded more realistic with, with this over the, the um, uh, Yamaha. And again, I think, um, again, the Yamaha is just geared into that higher range. It's built in to play into that a little bit higher range, which again might be good for somebody. But piano notes to me, um, I do play a little piano. And so, you know, that, you know, like hearing that, knowing what that sounds like on different pianos, there's there's definitely a more mid or bass, even to some of the higher notes that this plays better and more realistic. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it on sound. Um, so again, you, you know, you, you have to make your decision, like, is, you, you know, the amount of money that you put down worth a little bit difference? I, I really do believe that, you know, going back to shout out and props to this Yamaha AS2200, it's a great bang for the buck in this hi-fi industry. I mean, you got to spend a lot more money to um, start to improve on that. Um, you know, again, I, I think it's rated at, um, you know, 90 to 100 watts. These are forum speakers, so it's probably cranking out it doesn't double it but it's uh, around 160 watts this is 200 watts into um, I, I guess all home loads but um, you know so they're they're supposedly paper wise number I think that this is you know better cleaner more high quality power um, but it comes at a price you know so hopefully that helps make make the decision um, uh, help you get into the hi-fi industry affordably. Um, you know, there, there's some really good um, bang for the buck products out there, especially, you know, looking at that, that Yamaha, it's a, great, it's a great deal. I didn't talk about the DAC in this. This does have a built-in DAC, which is kind of nice if you want to um, use some digital music to it. I, I, I just have analog stuff plugged into it, so I'm just streaming a signal analog. Um, Happy to talk more about that. If you guys have any interest, leave it in the comments. I can make another video on, on that. Um, <clears throat> aesthetics. Um, drop it below what, what you all think. Um, again, I really wanted to, to, to like this and be blown away. You know, I guess I have a, a, a lot of decision making to do on if this is worth the price tag over the Yamaha. There's definitely a cool factor to me on Mac. You know, it's got some a big history. They played at Woodstock. You know, there the amps used at Woodstock. I wasn't even born then, but it's still cool, right? Um, it, it's got that nostalgic, old school look with a modern flair to it. And again, you know, I'm a meter person, so the amps that I was looking at um, have, have, have to have meters in them. I think that's cool. I'm kind of old school that way. I like to have a little bit of motion when I'm sitting there staring at the wall or this painting, listen, listening to music. It's fun to watch those meters dance around. Um, so I love the, you know, the meters, the big blue lights, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for the looks of it. I guess, you know, and, and I have my wife down here too, looking at some of this, because again, it goes back to, I got to, this is a living space. I have to have it look nice too. And that plays into the integrated versus separates without, with wires running everywhere. Um, I, I think it's cool. We've got obviously a more modern space down here. 
um, you know, we've got white lacquer furniture and uh, graffiti art wall, art on the wall. Um, so I, I don't know, what's your thoughts? Like, is, is the old school look, does it look okay with the, with the more modern look? I know, I, I personally think that the Yamaha looks a little more in place, but this has got a cool factor too. Um, where I think these look absolutely amazing are in like um, loft type uh, setups, uh, interior design where there's bricks on the wall and you got the wood furniture and you got the clip speakers, you know, the, the older style wood clip speakers or JBL speakers. I think that's perfect for these, but I don't think it looks bad in a, in a modern environment. So, you know, look wise, you have to make the decision. Um, it's not as clean and sleek and, and modern as the Yamaha, but I, I think it's got a, a, a really cool design element to it. So American history built right here in the US. I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff too. Um, love to support the, the, the American workforce in countries and uh, you know, that's a whole nother topic. But you know, I think, it's, I think it's, it's, it's been a fun experience, absolutely. So hopefully that helps. Um, you know, it's kind of a long-winded uh, review of, of the two of them, but you know, it's like myself, hopefully I can help somebody else out there that doesn't get a chance to have these things side by side in their own rooms. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of reviews out there on the 8952 yet, so I think it's a, maybe because it's a relatively new product, but or upgrade. I mean, it was the 8900 before, but this the 8950 is the upgrade with the DA2 um, DAC in it, which again, I didn't review, I didn't use, because um, I like the analog stuff. But um, anyway, hopefully that helps. Signing out, leave a comment below. If there's anything else I can help you out, that's what I'm here for, that's why I did it. Um, again, not sponsored, just enjoy the, enjoying the hobby um, and the journey. So have a great day. Enjoy the music listening. Again, that's what it's all about. See ya. Alright, here we are, gonna unbox the 8950. Let's take a look. Alright, here we go. Outer boxes. We already got rid of the outer box. So yep. here she is. This is heavy. 75 pounds, so I recommend two people. Find a helper. Hopefully your wife is strong and allows you to have this heavy gear in your house. 